Hi, I'm Chris Pettigo, and in this video, we'll be talking about lacework workload security. We'll start with what is a polygraph and why is it awesome? Next, we'll talk about some of the benefits the lacework agent provides. And finally, we'll go over a couple sample events. All right, so what is a polygraph and why do you care? Well, polygraph is a visualization of all of the communication going on in your environment. This goes a level deeper than networking tools you may be familiar with because we're not concerned with what ports and IPs are happening. We're concerned with what processes are receiving and what processes are sending connections. This is actually a pretty cool and interesting thing that only Lacework does. What we're doing is we're on your system listening to slash proc and looking at that process metadata and we're looking at every incoming packets metadata. So we're looking at the source port, source IP, destination port, destination IP, and protocol type. And we're live stitching together when connections are actually received by a process and actually sent by a process. Now this isn't data that Linux provides. This also isn't data that you would get in your logs. This is something you have to calculate at real time. And what we're doing with this data is we're putting together a map of everything that happens and then we're using this to learn what's actually happening in your environment and we're comparing that to the history of what we've seen happen in your environment. So right now this is everything that's going on in our Lacework QA environment. All of the communication pieces, everything. You can even see that we've had a connection to an Azure Edge. That was actually me deploying Kubernetes on Azure. Now, I'm going to filter it back again to just show Nginx. Now, I show this because this is an easy to understand process. So from left to right, we have connections coming into our Edge server, which is Nginx. And as you know, anytime you put a server on the internet, you're gonna receive tons of bad IP addresses and a couple good IP addresses. Well, we look at those and we categorize them. So if you do have some bad data coming in, we'll let you know. The next thing we do is we look at what process and the associated user that's running on your system is actually receiving those connections, how much data are they receiving, and how much data that process is sending. In addition to that, we look at any child processes that were spawned by that and we associate that together because we know that if this process started this process, they're probably related. And as you can see here, this child process with a different UID actually is doing all the sending for Nginx. So with our instance of Nginx, we have the parent process which is receiving connections and the child process which is sending connections. And then we have it connecting to HA proxy. Now this is actually happening because we're observing outgoing connections that Nginx generated, again, through slash proc and network metadata, going over to this other server. And on that server, we're observing HA proxy receiving connections that that other server sent. Now that's pretty cool if you think about it. This allows us to do a lot of things that nobody else can do. Let's say there's three people logged into a Bastion host and all of them pseudo to root. This is kind of where tracking is gone. Maybe on that box you can kind of tell, but the moment they jump to another box, your traditional network traffic is only going to show things over port 22. And then once they're on the new box, you, it's, your guess is as good as any on who is doing what there. But we're actually going to track that. So if someone jumps onto the Bastion, then SSH is over to the database server. Networking is gonna show port 22 traffic, which is probably known good in your environment. We're gonna show, hey, this was Bob. He logged into the bastion, he pseudo to root, then he jumped to that database server. In addition to that, we're also going to tell you if he decided to put a backup on S3, like maybe he did an AWS S3 CP in the backup file. And what's interesting about that is, 
we know the difference between him doing that and that cron job on the system doing that nightly backup. So if you do have a bad actor who's trying to exfiltrate data, we'll let you know. There's a couple other things we do that are really powerful here. For example, the grouping. So for example, we see three instances of etcd and they're all behaving identically, so we've grouped them together. We do the same thing with S3, but we do allow you to see what buckets are actually being used there. Now, this is important because most environments are massive. And if you have 300 Nginx processes running across 50 nodes in 1,000 containers, you don't need to see 1,000 containers. You only need to see the representation of it. So we really help you understand what's truly going on. This is kind of the level of visibility and understanding that your DevOps people would love to have. So the polygraph is pretty cool, but we also have some other features I want to talk about. First, I wanted to talk about FIM, File Integrity Monitoring. This is file integrity and change monitoring. It's required for FISMA, FedRAMP, et cetera. What this is, is we are scanning a predetermined set of directories that you can customize, and we're calculating the file hash, a 256-bit hash of every file that's found. We're also doing the same thing for every process as it's launched. So what this does is this allows us to understand what's in your environment, and then we take those hashes and we compare them to known bads. So if you have a virus payload that hits your environment, we're gonna let you know about it. In addition to all of that, we're also storing the command line from every file. Now this data comes from slash proc. We're not looking at a history, we're not doing any of that. We're pulling this directly from slash proc. You can see there's some bad stuff going on here. We have Hydra, Hydra is a well-known brute forcing tool. This that I had here, this is Bitcoin mining. Our environment's pretty bad. We hope yours never gets this bad. In addition to file integrity and change monitoring, we also have a list of packages that are installed either via a yum or a DKPG, or maybe someone just downloaded the payload and installed it regularly. Um, one other thing that's kind of interesting is we do have executables where we found the same process or the same version, but there's multiple hashes for that. That means they're not exactly the same. So if you're looking through your environment, you want to see why things are acting weird, you could check this out and it might give you a little bit extra insight. So now that I've shown you both the polygraph and file integrity and change monitoring, I wanted to show you what we do to let you know when those events that we find happen. So this is a sample of what you would see if you got a file integrity monitoring event. So we let you know it's a suspicious file. We give you a severity. We give you the hash. We tell you where we found the file and the file name. And we also give you the host we found it on. We'd also show multiple hosts listed here if this was found on multiple hosts. You could then click the host and you can see a little bit more about this. First, we know that there is only one host. This is a DNS name, if you're familiar with AWS, is how they do it. And there's only one server that had that host name at the time. But there were four unique users on that. And you can see connections, total bytes in, total bytes out, everything about this. So this would help you kind of investigate what's happening. We look down here with machine communication. There were a couple IPs that we were communicating with. And uh, you can see some of the additional information, all the machine tags, the information about the network cards, um, all its activity, who was logged in, if anyone was there, processes running, what ports it's listening on, the, any DNS lookups it did all the way through. So it really gives you a very, very deep level of information about what's happening on that server. So you can do a lot for forensic investigations. The next event I wanna show you is my personal favorite. This is something that 
nobody else can do. If you read the description, this is saying there is a process called Hydra that was running on this IP address or this host name as this user, and it connected to SSHD on a different server as the user root. So what we're seeing here is Hydra. Now remember I mentioned earlier, this is a well-known brute force tool, was running on this server as user Ubuntu, and it was able to successfully brute force a login to this server. Now, I don't know about you, but that would be really important information for me to know, especially because the moment you put a server edge on the internet, people are gonna try and attack and brute force it. So you'd want to know if someone makes that connection for the first time. And then if someone's gotten into your environment and they downloaded hacker tools to jump to the next stage, you really, really want to know what's happening. I also have some additional information. We can see here that during this time, Bitcoin mining started happening. So it's very likely that once that brute force happened, Bitcoin mining went, went on. Um, here's some additional details. You can see communication with devices without agents. There weren't any all the way through. And here's all the process uh, details. It looks like you can see the actual command line used to launch that process Hydra. You can see it's associated with multiple processes. So there were multiple instances running. You see accepted SSHDs. So that's kind of a summary of Everything, I think if you try it for yourself, you'll find that everything I showed you plus a lot more is really compelling and I hope you like it. <laughs>